Welcome to the Windy City Bender Podcast with your hosts, Noli, Boatsy, and Jerem. Hey there, ho there, everybody. Welcome to episode 18 of the Windy City Bender Podcast, the uh, the Savard. The Savard. The Savardian Spinorama. That's what this one's going to be called. Uh, thanks for joining us. Today's a big day. Today's it's, a big day. It's a fun day. It's a fun day. Today is Friday fun day. It's sure. <laughs> yeah, well, two, there's we'll, two Fs there. It doesn't we'll always have to be thing. Sunday, so you could suck it. <laughs> uh, it's a big day because Noli's not here. Oh. That's why it's a big day. It's a big. Uh, it's big loss for the uh, the Benders community. Noli. Uh, is... Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, I'm, it is. I'm just playing with yeah, Noli. No, it. Uh, uh, I I feel I feel less of a hole today. It's weird because. <clears throat> When he was gone last time, we had we had people filling in. Uh huh. Yeah, we it's... couldn't uh, couldn't do that today. We um, miss him a lot. Um, no, he's working today. Uh, couldn't make it out. Couldn't be Verda. So um, so why are we recording so early? We are recording so early because we have an all star, an NHL all star on the show today. A folk hero. Yes, he is. He is. It, there are songs written about him. Uh, they were. They are now sung in uh, as children's songs. That's um, that's about Eric Samborski. I mean, yeah. Let's we'll say you got the Eric, you got the Conor McGregor mm-hmm. national anthem song. Mm-hmm. Samborski stuff just blows them out of the water. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We have Eric Samborski on the show today. Uh, emergency backup goaltender for the Hawks last year when Corey Crawford went out with uh, when his appendix exploded, um, and then he uh, was the. Same thing for the Flyers a little bit more down the road. I yeah, think it was, like it was like towards the, the end of the it season. Was like after the New Year, yeah. Yeah, it was towards the end of the season because yeah. that was when um, – I always fuck his name up. Um, the goal, he collapsed. No earth. No yeah. Earth. Yeah, no he collapsed. Yeah. Mason was sick. Mm-hmm. So we, we got uh, – he tells us a little bit about that. Yeah. That all yeah. happened. Yeah. But um, – Oh, also, um, I'm Potsy. Jerem is, Jerem <laughs> is Jerem, with I'm us here. today. And like I said, Noli is – you know what? Is missed. Last night when Noli told us that he wasn't going to make it, mm-hmm. I was like, can I find a cardboard cutout in <laughs> like five hours just and just put it in picture. there? Or at least like a picture of his head mm-hmm. and just tape it on the chair so he's kind of like here with us. Mm-hmm. But couldn't, couldn't do it, huh? No, couldn't. No, there's no five-hour print in That's Orleans, right. unfortunately. That's right. You tried. I there's tried. A, I tried. Effort there. there was an effort. Um. Yeah, guys, it's exciting. Hopefully, this is the first of many interviews that we get to do. We, we're trying. Yeah, we're uh, we're putting we're doing, we're we're doing feelers stuff. out. We're doing stuff. We're 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 there. We're doing stuff. Um, and by interviews, I mean like NHL players and stuff like that. I mean not like Tanner, Dice, gross, <laughs> Dice, sixteen is not disgusting. best. No, it's not, not best. best. Uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm happy this one's a Savard because this is a big one. This is a big this one. Is a big this is a big milestone. I'm glad one. this wasn't like the the Dumont or the, the sixteen. You know, I'm mm-hmm. happy that this is this is the Savard. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna call uh, we're gonna call Eric. I just looked directly in the camera like I'm on TV. Like we're gonna call Eric now. We'll be right back after these messages. Yeah, no, we are gonna call Eric right now. Though we'll come back right after these messages. <laughs> All right, guys, we're uh, we got a big guest today. Big guest today. We got. Uh, Good old Eric Samborski, the uh, the backup hero for the uh, the Blackhawks and the uh, the Philadelphia Flyers last year. Eric, how you doing, buddy? Uh, good. How are you guys? Doing good. Doing good. Hey, thanks for coming on. Hey, not a problem. Happy to be here. Now, uh, we know uh, from your uh, hockey DB page that that you played in the ACHA uh, with Temple. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. How was uh, how was your ACHA experience? I uh, I loved it. I had a blast. Um, I was there at Temple for four years. Um, you know, made a lot of friends. Played some some good hockey over those four years. So yeah, I, I loved it. A couple of the guys here, me and uh, me and Noli played for uh, Robert Morris University in Illinois uh, for the oh. ACHA. So uh, Very nice. we know exactly what it's like to play in the in the Cha. Um, yep. How uh, was that D two or D three? Uh, it was D two, D two, and then they made the transition to D one. Were you there for that transition? Uh, 
officially no, but our, my senior year we played about half our games Division One, so it was that kind gotcha. of in between year. Gotcha. Well, how did that compare to that ACHA experience compared to uh, the NHL? Obviously, I, I, it's going to be a lot faster and a lot quicker. But I mean, did it really just kind of blow your mind? Uh, yeah, I mean, you. I've watched these guys up close before, and you realize, you know, when you're close to them, um, how you know strong, fast they are. How you know everything they do is so much faster than you're used to. Um, so yeah, obviously it's, it's two different worlds. Um, shots are obviously harder, um, but I think the biggest thing, you know, for me being a goalie was the release of the puck. You uh, you don't exactly know uh, when it's coming. They hide it so well. So I think that was the biggest difference. Like I said, we were in the ACHA ourselves, and uh, the big joke when we were there was uh, chop problems. Everything that went wrong in the league, we just blamed it on chop problems. Uh, yeah, was, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. What was your biggest chop problem when you were there? Uh, let me think here. Um, I think one time at a at practice, um, a puck hit the – sprinkling system on top of the the rink and uh the, the ice flooded and you know we couldn't have practice that week because you know the ice was just flooded with uh old water so no practices and uh, a couple times um we've had we had some bus issues you know not showing up or bus being late stuff like that um normal stuff but yeah. uh you know that's stuff happens in club hockey that yeah. uh you know you, you don't think of normally uh-huh the uh, the Panthers a few years back uh, needed an emergency goalie and they had a tryout actually for uh, for for uh, somebody to come in whenever they needed another one. Did you go to that at all or no? Uh, no, I've uh, the first time this happened, um, it was kind of a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that I would be put on was put on this list of you know guys that they could call just in case. Um, it pretty much just happened because. I skate at the Wells Fargo Center, um, you know, a week, every week or so in the winter, um, in the morning with some, you know, people that work, work for, you know, Comcast. So, I mean, people knew of me around the rink a little bit. And um, because I worked for Flyer Skate Zone and Ed Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation, mm -hmm. um, I was around. So that's kind of how it just, it, they just kind of put me on that list when the Blackhawks called the Flyers looking for a goalie. And it just kind of worked out that. They threw my name out. So you, you said that you didn't know you were on this list. So what was, like, the initial reaction when you got that phone call saying that? that uh, well, I, yeah. Actually, I was at work. Um, I was at a Flyer Skate Zone at the time um, when the, they were looking for me, and I got off the ice. And um, the assistant general manager of the Flyers came up to me and started asking me, you know, where I played hockey and all this stuff. So I was, I was, as I was telling him, he was just typing everything into his phone. And I thought this was kind of weird. I, you know, I said, what's going on? <laughs> uh, he said, uh, the Chicago needs a backup goalie today. And I was like, you mean like the Blackhawks Chicago? <laughs> he said, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he said, do you have your stuff? And I didn't have it with me. It was back, back home. So he said, go get it. And if you're, uh, if they're going to use you, you'll get a call from them in about 10 minutes and, you know, sure enough, I was, you know, driving home thinking, oh, this this is this is ridiculous. This can't happen. And my phone rings and it just said Chicago, Illinois on there. And I, I knew it was real then. Yeah. What was the time frame there? Because I, as I remember, that was an afternoon game. Yeah, it was an afternoon game. It was tight. Um, I found out at 11, I believe, and the game was won. So I had to oh, wow. leave, um, leave Voorhees, New Jersey, go back to, you know, North North Philly, Northwest Philly, get my stuff, and then back to South Philly for uh, mm. for the game. So it was a, it was a lot of um, getting around traffic, and uh, you know it was a little stressful there for a little bit yeah. trying to get there on time. Yeah. Uh, so as we all know, you were the emergency backup for the Hawks, and then you did it later on with the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, yes. You don't have to answer this. I guess you could. Skirt around it if you want, but which one was better? Just remember, this is a Chicago podcast. <laughs> well, you know, I to be honest, they were both great because they were very different experiences. Um, so, I mean, Chicago obviously was the first time that I did it, and that was 
super special. And I got to, you know, warm up with the team, um, you know, be on the bench the whole game. So that was a tremendous experience. And, you know, there's nothing like it. Uh, so that was a little different from my Flyers experience because I was in the press box because they needed, they said, you know, Mason was sick. They needed me just in case. Uh, their Anthony Stolars didn't get there in time, so they wanted me there just in case. Stoli got there, so I figured, you know, okay, I'm going to watch the game with the scratches up in the press box. This, this is going to be great. And then just casual, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> watching the game with the scratches in the press box. Yep. And then uh, we that ten minutes into the game, we got a scare. You know, uh, Stoli passed out on the ice. Um, was real, real scary. I was dead quiet in there, but as soon as he he hit the ground. Um, I was on my way down to the locker room to start getting dressed. So mm. I spent my the game in the locker room mostly. I was, you know, they didn't. I wasn't technically because I was a fourth goalie. I was supposed to be in the locker room, mm-hmm. not on the bench, unless they needed me. Mm-hmm. So I was in the locker room until the end of the game where they tried to put me in, which was so such a class act that they, you know, they yeah. tried to get me out there for the last 25 seconds. Fortunately, it didn't work out, but it, it was pretty cool. So the ex- two experiences were kind of different, you know, warming up and being on the bench the whole game versus, you know, being in the locker room and then, you know, almost getting in at the end. So there are t- two different experiences, I think. Yeah. What was going through your mind when they wanted to put you in the game? Uh, you know, I was trying I was trying to focus as much as I could, try and get ready. Um, but, you know, when I'm standing there looking at the clock, you know, I'm trying to focus, but – if you look at pictures, as soon as I hit the ice, man, I'm I'm just smiling like a like a kid on Christmas. So <laughs> that's all. It, the fact that the fans gave you like a standing ovation too, they knew who you were, and that had to yep. feel amazing. Yeah, that was pretty cool because they all knew the Chicago story. Yeah, and then um, the getting a cheer from them was awesome. But I think what was the best part was when I had to get off the ice, all the booze I got. Yeah, I think that was that was even better. So that yeah. was pretty cool. We all know that the Hawks gave you uh, a, a bunch of stuff. They flew you out to the United Center for a game and uh, gave you your own personal yeah. jersey and uh, the helmet and everything. Uh, yep. What did the did the Flyers do anything like that or? Uh, not not so much. I got more uh, apparel and uh, mm-hmm. s- some warm up stuff from them. Um, but I they've given me stuff from because uh, I practiced with them three times last year whenever they needed someone. So I got stuff along the way. Um, from them, but they were talking about doing a mask for me, um, mm-hmm. pro- maybe uh, up this coming year when um, you know Flyers goalies are getting their mask yeah, done. They're gonna you know maybe do one for me. They were talking about, so I think there's stuff in the works. Um, mm-hmm. I know they they've had a pretty busy uh, off season, so I'm yeah. kind of waiting until the ball gets rolling here. Um, you know, I don't really expect anything from them because you know it's just it was cool to be there and you know be right. a part of it, and they've already done so much. But yeah, um, stuff might be in the works though. They probably just don't want you to wear that Blackhawks mask anymore. Yeah, I mean, uh, it clashes a little bit out there. Yeah, um, <laughs> a little bit, a little yeah, bit. But uh, any good chirps yeah, from wearing that mask? Orange and orange and black one would be good for uh, you know, just just to uh, be around uh, Philly with it. Uh, you know, kids are all excited about yeah. it, so that would yeah. be pretty cool. Did you get uh, any good chirps from uh, any of the Flyers for wearing the Hawks mask or having the Hawks ma- Hawks Hawk mask with you? Uh, well, they they saw it. Um, Previous to that game, like I said, I, I practiced with them a handful of times, and uh, they actually all thought it was really cool that they uh, hooked me up with all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, they were liking it. The goalies were checking it out. Um, yeah, everyone thought it was pretty cool. And it, it's hard to see, uh, especially on TV, but there's a there's a little Flyers logo tucked in in the back there. Is there? And, uh, oh. They thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Is there a certain guy on, uh, on either team that you're excited to meet? or? Oh, really, just all of them. Yeah. I mean – um, you grow up watching these guys and, you know, especially the first time with the, the Hawks, you know, that's, uh, that's a great team. It was a great squad, you know, three cups, six years at that point going in. And obviously they're, you know, superstars on that team. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. And then the Flyers, you know, it's your hometown team, grow up watching them, um, see these guys, you know, every game. And uh, it's just cool that how both teams are receptive to me you know they, mm-hmm. they treated me like i was supposed to be there um get, they were, gave me respect that you know um that like they would any other teammate and uh you know we had, we had fun we both teams joked around with me a lot so 
two great, great teams and great group of guys on each team. Was anybody different than you had expected them to be? Um, let me see here. On the Blackhawks, uh, Seabrook was quite funny. He was a funny guy. Um, we, he was joking around with me a lot. Um, and the Flyers, I mean, I knew a little bit from practicing mm-hmm. with them. Um, they all just, you know, like I said, you know, had fun with me. They all, you know, got know my nickname by now. They all call me Sembo when I'm mm-hmm. in the locker room. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, you know, they're just. I think it says a lot about hockey how they, you know, treat people and you know welcome people into you know their world for a little bit. It's pretty cool. So, you've been playing hockey for a long time in your life. You know that a big part of being in the locker room is there's a huge locker room guy there's the guy that controls the locker room music you know who are those guys on uh on the hawks and the flyers um you know i obviously uh the captains and the assistant captains on both teams um you know really step up and you know control the room talk about you know what what they have to do and stuff like that as far as music goes um Hawks that was going already. They pretty much just had a set mm-hmm. playlist going, I think. So uh, I don't really know. And um, for, I wasn't down there for the pregame for the Flyers, so I don't know what was going on mm-hmm. with with, uh, with that. I was up I was upstairs at that point still. But um, it's really just you know these guys are so focused on what they have to do. They do everything yeah. you know at the highest level, obviously, and their hockey IQ is through the roof. So just sitting there listening to guys' conversations about what just happened, what they need to do better, stuff like that is, is you know, it was, it was really cool to hear how these guys talk about the game. Mm-hmm. How crazy that you are literally a legend in Chicago now. Like, you, have, yeah. you had a jersey at the the Blackhawks convention going up being sold for over $600. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, that, uh, that kind of blew my mind. I didn't even know that was going on, yeah. to be honest, in Chicago until someone tweeted it at me. And I, I, was, I didn't even know that was going on. And the fact that, like, someone, you know, spent that much on the jersey or or that people bought jerseys and T-shirts from NHL.com with my name yeah. on it and, uh-huh. and Corey's number, which uh-huh. is pretty wild. Because, um, you know, I, I mean, people in Chicago, when they flew me out there, like, saw me in the concourse and, you know, yelled my name. I was signing autographs for people. And now it's starting to, like, after the Flyers, it kind of happened in Philly a little bit. People people know who I am. Um, Sign a lot of autographs more than I ever thought I would in my life. uh, It's it's so much fun. I'm just kind of, you know, I I don't, whenever someone wants an autograph or anything, I'm so happy to do it Mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm like, I don't really exactly know if you you really want this, but I'll do it because, you know, it's a a lot of fun, especially with, uh, younger kids that I work with um, on the ice, they they love hearing the story, and it's it's so much fun. I mean, you're living, you lived at our dream. I know that because yeah, yeah. I remember when that story first, like watching the game, and they're going through the whole details about oh Crawford's out and all that kind of stuff, and then they start yep. talking about you. And I'm just like, man, this is that's my dream right there. Mm-hmm. This guy is living the dream, playing for the Hawks. But then they're like, oh yeah, he's a Philadelphia Flyers fan. I'm like, oh. Yikes. How is that? Like, I go, if he gets put in, is he going to pull, like, you know, some 2010 revenge on us or yeah. what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, that day I was definitely a Hawks fan. I mean, uh-huh. you're, you're wearing that, you're wearing that sweater. You're a part of the team. You, uh, for that day, you, you definitely, uh, in your allegiance will change that day. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm still a Flyers fan, but, uh, I mean, that day I was all Hawks and I mean, they're always going to be, uh, you know, my team in the West and all the special place for them always now. Mm-hmm. Tell us more about yourself. Like, uh, where did you play when you were growing up? Uh, actually, I didn't start playing hockey until I was about 15. Um, I played uh, up in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I played, you know, A, double A. Then I played juniors in New Jersey for a year, and then I went to Temple. Um, so, it was a shorter career than most mm-hmm. kids I've played with. Um, got a late start, but uh, I had you know, I had fun, uh, fun trying to catch up mm-hmm. to them skill-wise um, because you know everyone starts when they're you know five years old. I was a bit behind, but uh, it worked. Seemed to work out okay. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm a goalie myself, and I know that I have my favorite save that I've ever made. Do you have one? 
Um, yeah, there's a few. Um, you know, I have my favorite. I think from junior and my favorite from, uh, you know, time my time at Temple. Um, and now I definitely have a favorite from NHL warm up and <laughs> NHL practice. I think so. I I I think I have a, uh, my favorite list is getting a little long, but yeah. Um, stopping Patrick Kane, you know, with a glove save and warm ups was pretty unbelievable. Uh, yeah. You know, that's not something that everyone gets to do, so yeah. that was pretty cool and. Then in Flyers practices, um, you know, making a big save on someone, you know, coming down, coming down the wing, mm-hmm. and you know they, you know they chirp me, and then the next time they'll come up and make sure it doesn't happen again, <laughs> kind of thing. So uh, yeah, there's a few. It's fun. Yeah. Now you said you made a glove save on Patrick Kane. Did you windmill? Because every goalie knows that it's important to windmill after you make a glove save. Uh no, I didn't. Um, actually, <laughs> um, I was more just like happy that it was like in my glove <laughs> yeah. kind, of, kind of looked at, kind of just looked at it uh-huh. um but it didn't break your yeah hand. i mean yeah he uh he he picked me apart pretty good uh especially in the in the beginning and it took me a little bit to get going um yeah especially because i you know came in haven't been playing so and then stepping right. up with against these guys it's, it's pretty tough yeah. uh so it's it was fun to you know they pick me apart we laugh about it and i can you know and I can catch up to a few of them, make some good saves. Yeah, they uh, they enjoyed it. I think as much as me, so it was pretty yeah. cool. Do you have a uh, a favorite all time player or goalie? Um, so many goalies that you know I like and respect. Um, but I think all time is uh John Van Beesbrook. Um, Ooh, he you know was a smaller guy, um, but he was always in the right place. He was the, probably one of the squarest goalies I've seen. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I just liked the way Beezer played and uh, how he was, you know, you know, didn't, didn't have the size, but he adjusted his game mm-hmm. and, you know, played the angles perfect. So what are you up to nowadays? Uh, these days, you know, I'm, uh, I'm still – I'm working. I'm coaching still. Uh, doing a lot with the uh, Ed Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation. Um, you know, so I'm run- doing summer camps this year with the kids. Camps, you know, five days long every week of the summer different ages so uh, a lot of hockey for me right now not so much playing but uh we spend a lot of time uh coaching coaching the kids so you know it's it's uh it's a good time it's fun and then when uh they you know realize what happened to me they it's fun telling them the story yeah that's awesome uh we do a thing here called uh called riding pine you're riding uh, the pine pony like, pal spitting chiclets um yep so we have a couple people who uh, who have uh, written questions in. Uh, okay. First one we got, uh, how were you received in the locker room and what was it like in warm-ups with NHL talent? That one comes from Matt Ross. Okay. Uh, well, locker room was great. Uh, I mm-hmm. walked in. Uh, all the Hawks, you know, stood up, gave me standing ovation when I walked in, and uh, which was really – I did not expect. And uh-huh. they all come up, shake my hand, you know, thank me for being there. And, you know, I was thanking them, you know, for letting me be there. So yeah. um, it was cool. They uh, they were just really happy that I could help them out because, you know, they were kind of up against the wall there. But they all, you know, utmost respect and courtesy towards me. And, you know, it's their world-class organization and great group of guys. And they couldn't have treated me any better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the ice, you know, it's, it was just – that was the f- best, you know, 15 minutes of, of skate I've had – at that point in my life, it was, you know, uh, I was just in awe of these guys and so much fun to be out there with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one we have from Tanner Houston. Uh, this off season, how are you preparing for your emergency backup roles for this season? <laughs> okay, so, I mean, I I definitely am uh, going to be in a lot better shape this season, <laughs> this season than I was last season. Um just in case, you know, I mean, I don't expect to, you know, this to happen very often. Uh, but, you know, I do want to, you know, be ready for, you know, whatever. If I get the call or whatever I want to, you know, whatever organization it is, you know, I want to be the best asset I can be for them. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely, you know, trying to be in a little better shape than I was for these last two. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to stay on the ice as much as I can. So yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't really expect this to be a regular thing, but you know, I, I want to be ready if, you know, if it happens. Yeah. 
And finally, from uh, from all of us here uh, and the crew, what is your favorite hockey memory outside of the uh, the two uh, two times you got called up? Outside of that, so yeah. not NHL hockey. Not yeah. NHL hockey, yeah. Every day, because obviously that would hockey. that would be your number one. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'd say my first real year of hockey, we uh, I played uh, on an A travel team. We uh, we won districts, and it was probably the one of the best times of my life playing hockey because I was you know so new to it and be able to taste success right away. I think we went like 56, seven and three or something crazy. And it was so much fun. Great group of guys and winning districts and, you know, all these, all these tournaments and stuff. I think that was probably, you know, one of the best seasons I ever had. And Mm -hmm. that's one I'll always remember. Awesome. Well, Eric, we appreciate you taking the time to call in. Uh, This has been outstanding. Thank you so much. Hey, not a problem. Happy to do it, guys. Well, uh, we'll see you on the ice next season then, huh? All right, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, buddy. All right, thanks, All right guys, take care. Bye-bye. What a guy. Oh, dude, he was, he was cool. He was neat. He was neat. I, he, I want his knife. I, want a, I don't want his knife. <laughs> I don't want his knife. I don't know if he owns a knife. He probably owns like a, a steak knife set or something like something. that. I don't want that. I want his life. His That's life. That's what I want. Yeah, like... Because fucking cool. And I like how he talked about the Flyers, like, so uh-huh. nonchalant, like, oh, I've, I've practiced with them, and, you know, I've totally can't, like, like, fucking, yeah, we sat, and I sat in the, uh, in the, uh, with the scratches up in the, the press box, you know, just, just waiting for my chance, like, just casual, just no, casual, casual, you know, no. just chilling out with not the, uh, a with big the, deal, with the scratches. <laughs> oh, my God, what a, I wonder if he bought a ticket for the Powerball. Or mega million, whatever the fuck that. Uh, the Powerball. Yeah, it was a Powerball. Well, if he did, he didn't win. If if he didn't, he probably would have. Fair. Won. Fair. Okay. Knowing how how his life is going at this point. I do want to say that I think deep down he mm-hmm. wanted to say the Chicago Blackhawks were best, but that that Philly blood just couldn't. He couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah. It probably stung too much with the whole. Uh, 2010, 2010 thing. Uh, yeah, you had to go and drop that bomb. I, I was just, you know Damn, what? I was son, curious. That was, that was, you know, that was one ruthless. of my, that was one of my thoughts the whole time. Ruthless. I was like, man, are they gonna put him in? And if he is, how fast are they gonna like? Is he just gonna be like, here you go, and yeah. then just look right at Kane? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I honestly, I like, I put myself in his shoes when, uh, when he got, when he got put in the game and then he got pulled, and I would be devastated. Oh yeah. Absolutely devastated. And then to see um, uh, later on in the year, they hit. The, <clears throat> wow, that was gross. <laughs> that was disgusting. Something just hocked up in my throat. Uh, later in the year, they had. Uh, I think I think he was their uh, equipment manager, or like a trainer or something yeah, like that. Yeah, the trainer, and they he got to go. Yeah, I'd go be with... like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? I thought the whole. We should have asked what the reasoning was, but I thought I remember seeing something like it was. It was not necessary because he was a fourth backup type right. thing. The only reason that he should be able to go in is an injury. Injury. Yeah. And the equipment manager was the true legitimate backup. Right. I think that was the difference. Right. But still, regardless. I know. Oh no, the the equipment manager was under a contract, I think. The ETU or the amateur trial contract. Yeah, something I think, though, he, something he like that. Been too. He he didn't though I god I can't remember what see this why did we not ask this? Damn it, call him back. <laughs> <laughs> call him back. <laughs> Oh well, we hope you guys enjoyed it. At least now, now I'm a little upset, but it's fine. We'll just we we have his we have his number now, so we can just text him. We'll slide in his DMs. Somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, hopefully, there's more stuff like that to come. Yeah, uh, to come we'll soon. We got, so. We're always reaching out to people. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, we're not we're not that big of a deal yet, so no. it's kind of a little bit harder right, yeah. to get get a response. But we're working. Mm-hmm. Although we do have business cards now. Yeah, we do. We do. That's that's big stuff. So if you're you're mm-hmm. you're in Orland or Chicago land area and you see one of us, just ask for a business card. You know, uh, you know what it says on the business card? It says that we have a website. Oh, mm-hmm. what's that what's website? The website? The website is called the Windy. Nope, you're wrong. God damn it. WCBendersPodcast dot com or WCBenderPodcast dot com. There you go. Yeah, and you know what's on the website? 
All blogs. Of our blogs. Blogs. All of our blogs. Time that perfect. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Noah's not here, so now we get yeah. that connection. Now it's us. Yeah. Now it's us. I just turned all my attention yeah. on you. Now. <laughs> Usually I just forget about you over in the corner. But <laughs> I'm in my little nook. <laughs> but um, yeah, we had a great article by you. Uh-huh. I thought it was very well done. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and then we had one uh, from uh, CMOC. News contributor. Yeah. New contributor to CMOC about uh, what Team, Team USA would look like if uh, Batman and the NBA <laughs> would stop being stupid. And you know what? I I was re- like reading it. And I'm like, fuck. It's pretty spot on. It is spot on. It's pretty spot on. Um, coaching was a little – the coaching may be the only thing that I really would have questioned on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, regardless mm-hmm. – yeah, that was good. Yeah, I mean, he was telling me about it. He goes, uh, he said uh, he was at work, and he was like, "Oh, wow, ooh, that moves. That moves a lot." Yeah. yeah, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, no, I had a, I had an Excel sheet. I knew I had, I knew for sure Matthews was gonna be my my center, and I knew I I had uh, I had Eichel, and then I knew I had this guy, and he was like, I just kind of mix and match from there, and I was like, how long did you spend on this? He was like, I don't know, probably two hours or so, and I was like, you were at work." <laughs> I was at home and I spent two hours. We were at work, and he was like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't." Yeah. See, I'm still trying to write mine, and I can't like focus. I start typing, yeah. typing, and then I'm like, uh, "Well, you know, maybe I gotta rewatch some of these movies." So that's all. Yeah, I'm doing mm-hmm. what Goon Two was coming out next next Friday. How did you do anything in school? Ah, oh, dude, <laughs> lots of Adderall. I was. <laughs> you know what? I studied to be a producer, uh-huh. and the best thing about being a producer. You get to pass all the work to everybody else uh-huh. and just say, hey, report to me at this time. Uh-huh. So that's all I did. Yeah, I hate it when you tell me that. <laughs> but, yeah, so it's like Goon 2 coming out next Friday. And so I'm doing the top my top five hockey movies. Somebody saw Goon 2. I can't remember who it was. Was it a beer league conversation? Cause it, might, it might have been. Grady. Was it Grady? Grady texted yeah. me about it. Yeah. And he said he wasn't wasn't a fan. It's not like it's going to be the best movie of yeah. all time, though. You so know? I mean, It's still going to be funny. It's still going to be a hockey movie. I'm not, right. I'm not expecting it to win any awards or anything. It's definitely, I mean, it's going to be better than um, mm-hmm. than um, what's, uh, MVP. Oh, my God. Do you remember that? Most I'd... Valuable Primate. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. What a disaster. I was laying, speaking of hockey movies, I was laying down in bed last night, and for some reason... Her Brooks' speech popped into my head. And, like, I was like, I could recite that right now if I wanted to. I couldn't remember the first line. I was like, what? What is it? What is going on? Great moments. Yeah. And then, like, I was like, okay, just relax. (laughs) Think. And I was like, think of the little kid then. Maybe think of the little kid that was doing it. You got to channel your little kid. What did did he he say? And I was like, I can't remember the damn thing. I had to, like... It was two o'clock in the morning. I was like, I gotta look it up. So I looked it up on my phone. It was you were those memes that are going around right now. It's like I'm ready, still ready for bed, and then three o'clock in the morning. It's like <laughs> still on your phone. Yeah, still yeah. on your phone. But there's like a one where it's like a parrot. It's like three. I'm so ready, like ten o'clock. I'm so ready for bed. Three o'clock. And it's a parrot <laughs> just walking back and forth, <laughs> just chirping, going crazy. And I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. that's about right. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, so mm-hmm. all right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this was the Savard episode with Eric Samborski. Uh, minus Noli, but that's okay because we replaced him with Zimborski, and I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good trade off. Pretty good trade. I can be Love you, Noli. Love you. For Noli, who isn't here, Jerem, and myself. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. See ya. Follow the guys on Twitter at WCBP, on Instagram, WCB Podcast, and like them on Facebook, the Windy City Benders Podcast. The Windy City Benders Podcast.